in a sense, it fits within the microservices idea. You, you have multiple components on different technologies working together to, to create a workflow. Excellent. Thank you for the, uh, for the great presentation, Sander and Paul. There's, uh, there's another question, but maybe we can, you guys can answer it in the, uh, in the room. And with that, I'd like to thank you guys, and uh, I'll bring in uh, Permin now. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. Okay, so our next speaker is Permin Kalber, and Permin will talk about the state of vector tile servers. So, Permin is a geospatial software developer for uh, over 15 years. He's contributed to GDAL, QGIS, T Rex, and other projects. He's a, the co-founder of uh, Sourcepole, which is a Swiss company providing GIS services and solutions. So Perman has a pre-recorded talk, but he is here with us to answer questions. So I'm just gonna upload uh, Perman's pre-recorded talk here. So bear with me. I work for Sourcepole. Okay, here goes. Welcome to my talk about the state of vector tile servers. My name is Perman Kalbrer. I work for Sourcepole. We are located in Zurich, a group um, of developers in the area of WebJS. We developed the web, QG's Web Client 2 and providing a platform called QG's Cloud. We are a group of four C++ core developers doing QG's and QG's server development, uh, plugin development, providing maintenance and support and contributed to many other OSG projects. To start with vector tile servers, I would uh, look first at uh, raster tile service, which is uh, used for years now. Um, there you have a tile server on the server side, which includes styling. That's the main difference. You uh, include the styling into the raster tiles and publish these styled tiles to the client so the viewer has just to display the tiles of the current extent. In contrary, so vector tiles server does only produce vectors and the styling is applied on the client side. The styling information, the, the attributes, they have to be included together with the vector data and the map viewer has to apply the styling. But as you can see, the, the main advantage is that the client can style it in different ways. It can be uh, much more interactive. So the steps for creating these tiles is reading data within the tile borders. The geometries have to be clipped and usually you do apply a simplification for polygons and lines to reduce data size. If you do that, you have to fix in valid geometries. And finally, uh, the vectors are encoded in the MVT format, which is a protobuf format. A typical tile stack looks like that. In the case of a generate, which means you generate these vector tiles as files, uh, maybe on a local file system or on a AWS S3 or similar services. And these generated PBF files can then be served with a regular web server, just a web server to the client, which applies the styling. And this talk is about these tile servers, um, and there are many of them. There is uh, the main site, this awesome vector tiles page, which lists all implementations. And in the chapter servers, we have 29 entries, and on the command line interface section, we have 18 entries. and. So I've selected the, the major implementations for this talk. What I'm looking at is the following features, which is also a checklist for selecting 
a software. Um, we look at the supported input data formats. We look at the supported output data formats, files, uh, three MB tiles. And then there are two modes, a generator mode, which uh, has uh, usually a command line interface, which says, please generate all files, all tiles. And this is then files or F3 um, buckets. And the other mode is a tile server mode, which is a, a web server mode deli delivering tiles on request. So these are the two modes and then another criteria is how does it clipping, does it simplification and then uh, another feature is what kind of analytics do we have for optimization of the output tiles. I want to know uh, how big are the tiles, how many features are there in, in certain tiles. And a feature which might be interesting is what kind of projections are supported. Usually it's Mercator, but for some cases I want also other projections. And also we're looking at performance and scalability. So the first group of vector tile servers I want to show you are Node.js based applications. One of the First vector tile service is Cartotherian, first published in 2013. It was developed for use in Wikimedia and is now used and developed in, in Quant Maps, which belongs to the Quant search engine. Um, the input is Tile Life, which is a a pipeline for different input formats and the output or PBF files or also raster tiles. Um, it is based on MacNIC, the node bindings of MacNIC and they have also this MacNIC layer definition. Then there is TileServer GL which was first published in 2016. Uh, which is a little bit different because it's not creating tiles itself. It's just for publishing generated MBT tiles from MB tiles files, the SQLite format, and creates PBF files, GeoJSON, or also raster tiles, which uses Mapbox Geo native for creating raster tiles. The next slide is about OpenStreetMap tile stacks. So these are stacks which are optimized for creating vector tiles from OpenStreetMap data. And there is OpenMap tiles. The project started with another name in 2015. It's based on Imposn, the import into PostGIS. Uh, has also MapNIC for rendering and PostServe for the tiles and tiles of GL for raster tiles. A second software, which is uh, not a stack but a single software written in C, is TileMaker, published in 2016, which reads directly from OSM files and creates vector tiles. Then here is a list of standalone applications. Um, the first one is Tipikanu, published in 2015, which is a generator for vector tiles written in C++. Um, it reads GeoJSON as an input or geo, GeoBuff and creates PBF files or MB tiles. Tipikino is still in common use. Uh, it has good clustering functionality. It is well suited for big data sets. The next one is Tigola, published in 2016. 
it is written in Go, it is a generator and a tile server, which means you can serve live generated tiles. Uh, as a source, it supports PostGIS and also GeoPackage and has many output formats, PDF files, S3, storage, Redis and Azure blobs. It supports WebMarketer and also WGS84 as output projection. The next one, T-Rex, published in 2017. Written in Rust, another modern language. It's similar, it's also a generator and a live tile server. It reads data from PostGIS and GDAL supported vector formats and creates files and supports also S3 compatible storage. It supports user-defined projections. The same uh, goes for GDAL, which has vector tile support since 2018. It is just a generator. There is no web server built in. It's written in C++. It reads all GDAL formats, which are a lot, and writes PDF files and also MB tiles. The next slide is about what I call full stack vector tile servers, full stack in the sense that they are also WMS servers, WFS, and so on. The well known Geo server and UMN map server. Geo server, I've dated back the vector tile support to 2017, and map server has vector tile support since 2018. So, if you are a user of one of these two map servers, you can use the built in capability for producing vector tiles. And the last group is a collection of tile servers based on the PostJS STSMVT function. And these are front ends for getting vector tiles directly out of PostJS. And PostServe is, is one written in Python and is now part of the Open Map Tiles tools collection. Another one is Martin, which was published in 2018. It's written in Rust uh, and gives you a, an easy command line for getting tiles directly out of PostGIS. And the youngest one is Peachy Tileserve, which is roughly the same as Martin, but written in Go. And all of these, they are tile servers, which means they create tiles on the fly. Then you need an additional seeking tool for populating the cache. So that's about the major tile servers. The next topic is the client side of Vector Tile Display, which is also an important part of the Vector Tile stack. And first, the, the styling language. The major language is Map, Mapbox Scale JSON, uh, which is a JSON based styling language. Here we, you see an example besides the image. Um, so you have formulas for radius, for sizes, for colors. You can um, also have interactive hover functionality, like in this example. So you can do also dynamic things. It's quite a readable language, but many people 
uh, prefer uh, a graphical interface and there is one which is Maputnik. This is a graphical interface for Mapbox JSON styles. It helps you selecting colors and, and it gives you um, a preview and so you're, it's easier to, to create the style or to adapt the style. So that's the styling and displaying these maps, the style maps. There's Mapbox GL and the fork of it, that's MapLever, which forks the, the last open source version of Mapbox GL. It supports obviously JSON styles, it does rendering in the web GL context. It supports the 3D functionality of Mapbox. It's currently Mercator only. The other important one is Open Layers, which has support for vector tiles since quite a long time. The main advantage of Open Layers is that it also supports all the common base layers of GIS maps like WMS, WMTS, WFS and so on and it supports also other CRS than Mercator. It has a conversion of GL styles to open layer styles so it's not identical but there is a good support for uh, GLJSON styles. It uses the Canvas API, which helps with older browsers or older machines, but can be a disadvantage in terms of speed. So here's an overview of styling and viewer libraries. The editor Maputnik, I just showed, there is another one, Fresco, which is currently not very active. And the viewers, as I mentioned, Mapbox GL, JS, MapLever GL, Open Layers, and then Leaflet, which has good support via the Mapbox GL Leaflet plugin. And then there is Deck GL, which has MVT layer. And another one is Tangram, which uh, had a few years without active development, but now uh, people are working again with Tangram. And the last one in this list, I've listed Harp GL, which is from here. It uses 3.js, the JavaScript 3D library, so it has very good and extensible 3D support. Uh, but also support for different 2D um, map types. To finish that talk, I've compiled a list of my wishes of features I would like to have in some of these tile servers or tile stacks. What I would like to have is better support for optimizing tiles good statistics about tile size and tile content, a good feedback loop between styling and tile generation, because for styling you need properties which are embedded in vector tiles, and as soon as you choose change styling, also these requirements for the tile content can change. Then I would like to have more functionality for clustering, for point clustering, or other types of generalization. There are some servers supporting this, but there is still room for improvement. Another wish would be a server-side labeling engine. Currently, most labeling is done client-side, which has a lot of problems, as all tile-based maps have labeling problems or difficulties, and a server-side labeling engine could solve a lot of these problems, could create good labeling points, then labeling could be much better than now. 
Then I would also wish easier printing support because printing vector tile maps is still hard. Uh, it's not easy to have a good print output of vector tile maps. I would wish more tracing functionality. I would like to know how much time is spent in the database or in data reading, how much space is spent in pre-processing and gen tile generation and so on. And last point is standardization. There is uh, work going on in vector tile specification, but what I heard about it is it's more about uh, API for getting tiles and uh, API for getting styles, but not uh, a standard for this, the content of styles, the format of tiles. So I can get styles and tiles, but the hard part, decoding tiles and applying styles is not standardized. So this is my last wish and I still uh, encourage you to use vector tiles. And yeah, that's my Final word, I thank you for your attention and I I'm looking forward to see you in person again on another Phosphor G. Excellent. Um, thank you, Perman, for the uh, for the lay of the land with regards to vector tile servers. Um, we have that was an interesting presentation. We have a, a number of questions, so let's uh, Let's get going. So first question, if you were to use only one server to produce and serve tiles with multiple layers from a PostGIS database, which would you choose and why? Yeah, that's a tough question. <laughs> and I'm biased because I wrote one of these. So I, I'm hesitating to, call, to, to, to say a name here, but there is really a problem that there are too many servers. That's, that's a problem in that, that area because on, on on WMS side, we have three WMS servers and all of them have uh, enough um, support for um, developing. And in, in this vector tile space, we have so many servers that there is not really one server which is the, the, the top product which uh, covers all needs. So I don't give an answer to that one. Uh, we have a big list of servers and you have to choose one. For sure. Um, next, next question. In your review, did you notice which servers were working on OGC API tile support? I didn't check that. Not many of them. Probably Geo Server and Map Server first. Um, I don't know uh, of any. Cool. But I mean, that's not a big thing to do. So it's it's really, if this specification will be official, I think it, it's a question of a month or two and many of these servers will have this support. Agree. Which type, next question, which type of simplification do you apply to the data before tiling? This is crucial to reduce the tile size and boost the rendering process on the client side. Yeah, most of these uh, tile servers do the, the well-known algorithm like for polygons snap to grid because it's in the end it's anyway pixel based so you have to to put it in a, in a grid and for lines uh, Douglas Parker is the the standard algorithm most of these servers apply uh, when they do it automatically mm -hmm. but you can still uh, simplify by your own and, and serve your your own simplified data Mm -hmm. If you really have, want to have the best optimization. What is the most popular vector tile server? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I think the OSM world is a tough question. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, if you look at the OSM world, which is, uh, then there are these OSM tile servers. And if you look at the GIS world, um, I don't know. I can't give an answer for that. So uh, really, all of these servers I, I listed, they are in uh, in use and, and in heavy use. Mm -hmm. Next question. Can you speak to the performance baseline measurements for these various tile servers and tile generators? We made uh, 
uh, like uh, this old WMS shootouts for uh, vector tile servers, I think two years ago at uh, Phosphor G. And the result was that the difference is not that big. It's not, it's not that an important topic as you would uh, assume. Um, I would say all of them are fast. There is no slow server. Any of these uh, services is slow. I, I give, can't give you a figure right now, um, but that's usually the problem. And I mean, what you uh, have to know is if you produce files, then in the end, uh, performance is just network performance and nothing more. And, and if you have uh, many users on your site, you will do that. You will produce a cache and you will serve that cache with the HTTP server and that's it. Mm -hmm. Do you know if Map Libre is planning to support for non-Mercator projections? I know that they are planning. Um, I don't know when it will be there, but I think they will implement it. Next question. And any opinions or views on Tile Strata as a pluggable stack, which can do raster plus vector plus merging and so on? That's one I don't know. So I can't give an answer on that. I will check that one. Next question. How far away is MapNIC quality labeling for vector tiles? <laughs> Tough questions um, because labeling is is a difficult problem in, for vector tiles. Um, and I don't know how the question is meant because generally um, server side labeling has better quality than client side labeling, and that's what you usually do in in vector tile world because labels are placed by the web client. So if you need um, extremely good labels, then you have to create label points on server side. Um, and still, it's not has still not this uh, high quality uh, labeling capabilities as, as servers like Mapnik have. So this is really uh, a disadvantage of, of vector tile servers in, in general. Last question: Do you know of any vector tile server which applies ranking in order to generalize the features in uh, in lower level? No, I don't know, um, and I think it's not easy because it's usually a human who has to decide what is important and what is not important. I mean, what uh, some servers do is they do clustering, but not ranking. Um, I mean, um, what you can do in, in SQL, if you have um, user-provided SQL, like for Tigola or for T-Rex, then you can include ranking in your SQL queries. You can configure your SQL queries. Uh, also, the, the PostJS-based tile service can do that. And then you can include, uh, can have a ranking field in, the, in your data and use that for the different Zoom levels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 